I've gotten a, quite a number of questions from parishioners and from students at the school about why it is that our bishop did certain things during Mass. He was here a couple of weeks ago at St. John the Evangelist Church, and he was up at Geibel for a school visit that same week on Friday. And so a lot of people saw some things that I'm sure that they'd seen before when they've seen bishops come and do different things, but they never had a chance to ask me, or maybe they just finally were curious enough to ask the question, what's with the hat? Why does he keep taking it on and off? Well, I'm going to try to take those kinds of questions in two parts, but let's talk a little bit about who the bishop is, what his role is, and how that is transmitted or shown during the liturgy. So we believe that the bishops are the successors to the apostles, that the first 12 apostles were the first 12 bishops, that Jesus ordained and sent out into the world to lead the church. And the bishop has three primary functions or three roles to play in the church. They are to sanctify, to teach, and to govern. In terms of being sanctified, the bishops are the custodians. They are the guardians. They protect and offer the gift of the sacraments. During the Chrism Mass, the bishop blesses the oils that are then distributed to all of the priests in the diocese, and that's a representation of what it is that we do. Because the whole reason I am here, and the whole reason I can do what I do, is because I am authorized by our bishop to minister and to administer the sacraments. I can go to Geibel and teach. I can go to Geibel and celebrate Mass and hear reconciliation because I've been given that authority by my bishop. He is the one through whom it all comes. And he, along with all of the bishops around the world, have been assigned at different places to govern different local churches, just as the Twelve Apostles spread out from Jerusalem and then assigned other men to go and to teach, govern, and sanctify different parts of the world. And most of the European dioceses, the ancient ones, have origin stories that that first man was sent by St. Peter himself or one of the apostles. An example of this is Saint Denis, or Denis as we say, who went to France and is the patron saint of Paris and of France because he was their first bishop. He was sent by the apostles, they laid hands on him and sent him out to teach, govern, and to sanctify the people of that area. And effectively, that has been passed down and carried down to the point that our bishops are successors to the apostles. They are the ones who go in the name of Christ to govern, to teach, and to sanctify. So, through the bishop we receive the sacraments. We also receive, through our bishop, the teaching office. He is the one who makes ultimate declarations about how it is that we are to understand Jesus Christ in our local church. That is always connected with and in continuity with the other bishops, as well as our Pope, Pope Francis, who is the Bishop of Rome. And in that sense, it's not that he can create something new, but he is called to interpret the Catholic teaching for our time and place. That is his role as bishop, and we as priests and as lay people and theologians are in communion with the bishop and have to work with him, not against him, in attempting to proclaim Jesus Christ here and now. And then, of course, we have the sense of governance, that the bishop is responsible for administering to the needs of our local church, whether that means establishing local laws that we all have to follow, or establishing certain offices or regulations or groups of people who are assigned, I am giving you this task because our diocese needs this, whether it's the office of communication, evangelization, taking care of our youth, and whether that happens at the diocese 
or at the parish level, he is the one who governs and attempts to say, we are going to do this, let's make it happen. A number of years ago, you may remember that Bishop Molesic said, we need to be working hard against the opioid problem that we have in our areas. And so there was a lot of effort gone to to attempt to address those concerns. And they continue to this day to try to address this local problem. And he established certain criteria, certain things to be able to say, we need to do this. That's the job of the bishop. These three tasks that all of us have a part in, right? All of us have a part as priests, as lay people in sharing in that with him. It's not his only responsibility, but in the end, he is the authority. He is the one to whom we answer. He is the one that is responsible for it all. When the Lord takes him, hopefully up to heaven, he will have to answer for what it is that he has done and what it is that he has failed to do, not just on behalf of his own personal soul, but on behalf of his people, his diocese. And that's an immense task and responsibility. And this is why we pray so fervently for our bishops. We mention him by name every time we celebrate Mass during the Eucharistic prayer for that reason, that the Holy Spirit gives him the strength, the wisdom, and the fortitude to be able to do these things and to do them well. So how does that connect with the liturgy? Well, the bishop wears three things or utilizes three objects, if you will, to represent that authority that he has received. He wears a ring on his right hand, on his ring finger, and usually it's a rather large item. In the past, when things were a little more formal and bishops were more recognized more as royalty in a democratic society, we don't see things those ways, and it would be a little awkward to do this, and I'm sure he would be uncomfortable if you did. But in the past, people would kiss the ring. The proper greeting for a bishop or a cardinal or the pope would be to kneel and to kiss the ring. I'd be willing to bet there are still some people who do that, and it probably makes him a little uncomfortable, especially in light of the pandemic these days. But it is a symbol of that apostolic authority of that office. I wrote these three here and these three here, not because the ring means sanctification and the mitre means teaching, but all three imply all three. The mitre is the headdress that he wears, his hat, the, the tall pointy thing. And that mitre is a representative of his authority. Headdresses and hats have long been considered a sign of somebody's office. And so we have carried that through really since I think probably about a thousand years ago that bishops in the Catholic Church have been wearing mitres. And then the crozier is the staff that he carries. The crozier is a symbol of the bishop being our shepherd. That Christ is the true and the good shepherd, but in our local church, the bishop is the visible sign of that being shepherded, of being guided, of being governed, of being taught, of being sanctified. Through the bishop, Jesus Christ is at work through the hierarchy, through the visible church that we see um, established here in the Diocese of Greensburg. And so at the liturgies, we see those three things come into play, and they're used in particular ways. Well, why is it that certain items are used and made visible at certain moments? Well, you'll have to wait until next week to find that one out. Stay tuned, and God bless.